Halo's universe is an iceberg. Everything you see in the games is only the tip. You delve beneath the surface and all of a sudden, you start to look at even the most fundamental things under a new light. And the Covenant are no exception. What we see of the Covenant in the games is only a tiny fraction of their overall collective. In the far reaches of the galaxy, there exists a Covenant Fringe, composed of many Covenant species that were rarely, if ever, encountered by humanity during the war, and remain a complete mystery until now. You guys asked for it en masse, and so this is the first of the many video remakes that I'm going to be doing. Basically, to cut a very long story short, a load of my really old lore videos are both incredibly low quality, to put it lightly, and also highly outdated thanks to all the new lore that's released since, and so I thought it was time to update those videos and also, in the process, give them a nice fresh coat of paint. So, let's dive into the mystery of the Covenant species that we've never actually met. Starting out, we have a species that are exceptionally relevant now that we've fully covered Marathon on the channel, the Sharkoi. Now, the Sharkoi have a really storied history that begins long before Halo even existed, in Marathon 1, in fact, that released in 1994, two years before yours truly even existed, where they were instead called the Drinial. Now, they were only present in the first Marathon game, completely absent from Marathon 2 and Marathon Infinity, but would resurface early in Halo 1's development. Bungie originally intended to bring them back, now called the Drenal in Halo 1, but they never made the cut. And then they tried to bring them back again in Halo 2, this time called the Sharkoi, and although they were cut from the game again, this time they managed to finally find their way into Halo's lore. Now, Halo 2's limited edition, ooh, just look at that beautiful, beautiful thing. It came with a booklet inside called Conversations from the Universe, which is precisely what it sounds like. Basically, little lordums from various characters and corners of the very, very early 2003 era Halo universe. One of these conversations consisted of two elites discussing humanity's seemingly hopeless retreat in the final days of the war, and as one of the elites speculates that they're being forced back into an area that is tighter than they care to fight in, he says, soon we may be able to use the Sharkoi. And then that was the last the Sharkoi were ever heard of, until 2017's Halo Envoy. And for the first time in 14 years, the Sharkoi finally reappeared in Halo's canon, and they brought with them some very interesting new ties to everyone's favourite neighbourhood parasite. But before we look at that, we need to look at the absolute raw size of these fellas. The Sharkoi come in at an average of over 16 feet tall, and weigh, on average, brace yourself, 16,000 pounds. Put it lightly, the Shiakoi are ginormous hulking beasts, pure muscle and might. I can tell you right now, all the Shiakoi out there watching this video are currently smashing that subscribe button with a force unmatched by anything else in existence, so maybe you should too. And also the Shiakoi have started following me on Twitter, but they've been about as subtle with that as I'm being right now trying to get you to go and follow me over there. They were discovered by the foreigners during their war with the Flood, but not because of their size or their strength, but rather because of their apparent resilience to the Flood infection. Now, the Sharkoi weren't exactly a smart species. They were more akin to animals than an actual intelligent race, and so the foreigners couldn't just strike an alliance or a peace treaty with them. They knew they'd make for the perfect anti-Flood warriors, so they just needed some way to control them. And so, they created metal collars for the Sharkoi and an artifact known as the Vertex to be worn by their master. A metal headpiece that, when worn, released a burst of engineered hormones and created a deft balance of stimuli to specific cerebral tissue within its wearer, connecting to the collars and giving the wielder of the Vertex total control of the Sharkoi. Under control of the Vertex, the Sharkoi function, ironically, actually quite similar to the Flood, as a hive mind, mindlessly carrying out the bidding of their master. However, as we unfortunately know, they didn't prove effective enough against the rather overwhelming numbers of the Flood to save the foreigners. After the Halos were fired, the remaining Sharkoi were left in stasis before being eventually discovered by the Covenant and assimilated into their hegemony, only to remain on its fringe. 
Now, very few Covenant even knew about the Sharkoi's existence, let alone their potential power, but there were rumours of the Prophets possessing some sort of secret ultimate weapon that would crush humanity in their final days. This secret weapon was, of course, the Sharkoi. Now, they'd planned to unleash their hordes of Sharkoi on Earth, but it obviously never happened because they didn't have the Vertex, and thus the Covenant couldn't really control them. However, during the War on the Ark, the Vertex was found by a brute chieftain by the name of Hekabe. Realising the Prophets had led his warriors to defeat, he remained steadfast in his belief in the Great Journey, and led his pack on a holy mission beneath the surface of the now flood-infested Ark. Fighting through the installation's parasite-ridden depths, he lost many good warriors to the infection, but managed to retrieve the artifact that he came to learn was the Vertex, which led him to the planet of Karo, where a nest of Sharkoi hid beneath the surface, thousands of hulks that he planned to use to control the planet and dominate those of his enemies. However, his plan was foiled by Grey Team and members of one of Karo's militias, who actually managed to steal the Vertex and use it to have the Sharkoi kill Hakabe. The Sharkoi nest, and unfortunately, presumably, all of the Sharkoi within, were then nuked to ensure that they could never be weaponized again. However, there are likely many more Sharkoi out there, somewhere in the galaxy, waiting to be commanded. Now, what's interesting and also rather expected about the Sharkoi's law in Halo is how similar it is to the Drinial's law in Marathon. Despite most of their law actually being written by 343, not Bungie, 343 still upheld that Bungie tradition of keeping similarities between Halo and Marathon's universe. I'm telling you right now, at one point in history, they were in the same universe. I don't have my tinfoil hat on, so I will leave it there, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, they were in the same universe. In Marathon, the Drinial's main appearance is in a level called The Rose, a tight arena filled with helpless humans that the Drinial are exterminating. In Halo 2's Conversations from the Universe, the Elite says that because humanity are pushed back into an arena tighter than one that they care to fight in, they may soon be able to use the Sharkoi. Now, if you're asking me, that is definitely a subtle hint at their first appearance in Marathon. Then, 343's Halo Envoy reveals that Forerunner Collars were implanted into the Sharkoi to allow them to be controlled. In Marathon 2, a terminal reveals that a scientist in the Four, which is Marathon's Covenant, tried implanting a cybernetic junction made by the Yaro, who are Marathon's Foreigners, into the Drinial to try and control them. But it failed and resulted in the most terrible and destructive slave revolt in the Four's history. I'm telling you, Halo Marathon, same universe. I truly hope that we see the Sharkoi officially in a game at some point. I mean, they've been hanging around in the fringe of Halo's universe now for almost too long. No, over two decades, in fact. I think the time has finally come to bring these bad boys to the forefront. So, moving through the fringe to one of the new species that has recently been discovered, one that hails from the same era of Halo as the Sharkoi, the Slugmen. Now, the Slugmen aren't strictly their own species. Rather, they're an extremely unique gestalt form of hunterworm, like Golo, that have rarely been encountered by humanity. In fact, rarely were they ever even encountered by members of the Covenant either, so it's safe to assume that the Slugmen exist on the fringe. However, that doesn't mean that they didn't see combat. In fact, if the very few records that actually survived the flood infestation of High Charity are to be believed, it seems as though the Slugmen were, in fact, a highly specialized special forces troop. These sparse records indicate that the Slugmen were formed from a pruned family of Legolo Gestalts that were cultivated and exploited by the Prophets themselves for missions that took them far from High Charity likely to the distant corners of the galaxy that humanity are yet to tread. There were some, albeit exceedingly rare cases though, of the Slugmen actually deploying with elite military and exploration groups as special purpose sniper units. Now, because these exploration groups were often sent to retrieve ancient artifacts, I have a feeling that the reason the Slugmen were deployed in place of Jackals as snipers is frankly because the Jackals have a long and storied history of piracy, and compared to the Slugmen, likely can't really be trusted with artifacts that could fetch a high price on the black market. But you know, that's just a theory. A Slugman theory! <laughs> 
The slugmen let go low form seem to wear some sort of metal powered exoskeleton made from a similar material to the hunter's armor, and they also wield a highly unique particle rifle. Designed by profit artisan armorers to refine the elite beam rifle technology into a form that more closely resembles the weapons that their gods once used. These particle rifles, in particular, caught favor with those tasked with venturing into Flood Hive to commit holy cleansing, but thanks to how complicated they were to make and also how, frankly, dangerous they were, they were rarely seen. Besides the Slugmen, our sparse records seem to indicate that the only other members of the Covenant who wielded these particle rifles were prelates or elite stewards ordained personally by the High Prophets. What happened to the Slugmen after the war, whether they still exist on the fringes of the galaxy or have fallen into extinction, is unknown. But, you know, given that they're just another Let Golo Gestalt form, I'd say there's a chance they could pop up again somewhere soon, and you know what? I really hope they do, but... Just remember, if you happen to see a Slugman on the battlefield, make sure you load your salt tip rounds. Just a hunch. Another newly discovered member of the Covenant Fringe are a species known only as the Dazreen. Quite possibly one of the most unique species that Halo as a universe has ever seen. The Dazreem are an aquatic species that hail from the planet of Reem, a planet entirely swallowed by ocean that beneath the surface holds quite possibly the greatest repository of foreign relics in the entire galaxy. Certainly, the greatest ever encountered by the Covenant when their relic hunters first discovered it. All of the relics were contained within a deep network of sunken foreigner cities that lay beneath the waves. Cities that are now populated by Dazreem. The Dazri managed to repurpose the foreign technology in incredible ways, creating a vast civilization that thrived within the depths of Reem's oceans. As expected, the Dazrium themselves are a highly unique aquatic species, covered in fine layers of placoid scales in a wide range of colorations, their history and medical science entirely unknown to the Covenant. Whether that was because it was so complex that they couldn't understand it, or because the Dazreem was so protective of it, we don't know. What we do know though, is that as soon as their home planet was discovered, spilling over with foreign artifacts, the Prophets knew that they had to strike some sort of alliance with the civilization that protected them. And that's precisely what they did, although we still don't know the extent to which the Covenant actually utilized the Dazreem guarded relics in their own endeavors. But we know for a fact they definitely did. However, because Reem as a world was so prized, as the Covenant grew, the Prophets ensured that the number of those who knew of the planet's existence did not grow with it. If a Prophet were to go to Reem on a diplomatic mission, say, the entire crew that accompanied that Prophet would be executed once they returned to ensure that Reem's coordinates remained under lock and key. Those who did know its coordinates, and even those who simply knew of the planet's existence, spoke about it in hushed tones, far away from the prying eyes of the elites. Following the Covenant's fall, the coordinates of Reem and the Dazreem themselves fell further into obscurity, but you can be sure that there's at least one person out there who knows the location of the Galactic Atlantis. I just hope that one day we get to take a trip to it. All I'm saying is you could definitely make a custom campaign level in Halo Infinite's Forge that's set on Reem. Just putting the idea out there. Right, I am... Um, I'm gonna apologize beforehand for the, the deeply repressed memories that I'm about to unearth with this next member of the Covenant Fringe. And you know what, whilst I'm at it, I may as well also apologize to all of those who are about to learn about this species for the first time thanks to this video. Again, I'm truly sorry. This is the Yonhead, the Covenant's go-to species for smuggling and transporting recovered relics. Now, these guys are the only members of the Fringe that we've actually seen in an official capacity, and they made their debut in the, uh, incredibly forgetful, to put it lightly, Halo Nightfall in 2014. Well, they were also in Halo Escalation very shortly before that, but their main debut was in Nightfall. Hailing from the small moon of yon Hei, the yon Het are renowned for procuring and transporting hard-to-find items. Upon their initial discovery, the Covenant thought very little of the yon Het. They had no military and they were very few in number, so they didn't really provide any value to the hegemony. 
However, when the prophets learned that they were savants of trafficking and trade, they began to believe that they had merit within the covenant as non-combatants, and so, under the watchful eyes of administrators, they were recruited to scour abandoned worlds, to plumb darkened shrines, and transport recovered relics, in addition to a myriad of more mundane tasks. Strangely, despite this, the Yonhet were rather unwavering in their devotion to the Covenant, despite their tendency for confidence and cynicism. They struck it pretty lucky though when the Covenant's war with humanity began, because they were non-combatants and because the war was extremely costly and time-consuming, for all intents, the Yonhet kind of just fell through the cracks of the Collective and were able to essentially hide away within the Covenant for most of the war. There was little time for dedicated asset retrieval and trade missions that weren't of the utmost importance to their victory, and those that were of the utmost importance were likely deemed far too important for the Yonhet to carry out, and so they began to quietly disperse from the Covenant long before it collapsed. They did look to capitalise, however, on the disarray that the galaxy fell into in the years following the end of the war, hoping to emerge from the fringe and make a name for their species among the remnant factions of the Covenant by doing what they do best, working as contracted traders, salvagers, and smugglers. However, they are still few in number and so are still rarely encountered. Some place the Yonhet in trusted positions of power, whereas others exploit them through intimidation, coercion, and slavery. The only named Yonhet character that we know of was Axel from Halo Nightfall, who discovered a lethal element on a ruined shard of Alpha Halo that could be weaponized to only target humans. And so, doing what he and his species do best, he traveled to the human outer colony of Cedra, known to be a hotbed for insurrectionist activity, and sold the element to a hostile elite zealot, who then proceeded to use it in a mall, infecting everyone within with some kind of mystery virus that we still know nothing about. Axel was then captured by Oni, and rather violently interrogated until he gave up the location of where he found the element. And you know what? That's all the Halo Nightfall discussion that I have for this decade. Maybe in 2033, we might talk about it for a few more seconds again, but you know what, until then, let's cut it there. Frankly, as far as I'm concerned, the Yonhet can kind of just stay on the fringes of the galaxy and, and never really emerge. I'm fine not seeing these guys again. To be honest, they kind of seem like the product of just poor alien designs and nothing more. Now, it's time to venture even further out into the fringe, into the, uh, Fringe of the fringe, if you will. The next few species slash entities are either so rare that they barely even exist within the fringe, or are of rather dubious canon status, to put it lightly. Starting out, we have the Tank Beast. Now, the Tank Beast is shrouded in so much mystery that this is literally the only image that we have of it. It's from the same era as the Drenol and the Slugman, but so far, no 3D files of it have been found by the DigSite team in any of the early builds of Halo 1, so right now, this image exists as the only thing we have of it. The Tank Beast exists as nothing more than an enigma. Now, ordinarily, that would mean that I wouldn't really bother mentioning it, but given that the Slugman is now canon, I think it's fair to say that the Tank Beast might be as well, and given what the Tank Beast actually is, it being canon might not be that far-fetched. So, it's yet another Let Go Low Gestalt form, but this time it's one that kind of blurs the line between the mechanical and the biological. As the name suggests, it's a walking tank powered by hunter worms. Sound familiar? That said, it's nowhere near as large as a scarab. It's about 3.5 meters tall, so roughly 1.25 times the height of your average brute, and it comes with large spiked armored legs and an underslung weapon of some sort. The weak spots are clearly in the joints that connect the legs to the main body. The Tank Beast has never been spotted, documented, or recorded in the Halo universe, but given that they're just one of the many forms that let Golo worms can take, I don't think it's that far-fetched to assume that they could be canon. I mean, hell, they're actually, in hindsight, really similar to the Skitterers that the Banished used in Halo Wars 2. Those things were small, armoured, let Golo powered quadrupedals. There's definitely a bit of a parallel there. Next up, we have one of my absolute personal favourites from the Fringe. The Covenant Masters. Now, I'm currently reading your mind, I'm tapping into your thoughts, and right now you're thinking, aren't they just elites? 
And yes, although technically they are, they're actually a exceedingly rare, exceedingly rare type of elite that there's literally only one canon existence of. Now, developmentally, the Covenant Masters were pretty much just Bungie's original idea for the elites. Warriors that led the most powerful and unruly Covenant creatures into battle by means of control collars that could be shot off to cause havoc among the alien ranks. Now, to me, that sounds like a subtle hint that the Covenant Masters would control the Sharkoi or the Drinol in Halo 1, given that they were controlled by collars and also would go crazy if not under their command. Now, although the Elite itself looks biologically different, I always thought that it was. Canonically, the Covenant Master style of Elite is just a different set of armor, and the only entry in the entirety of Halo's canon for it is that of Usa Zealous, who, to cut basically a whole novel short, was the first heretic the Covenant ever faced, opposing the writ of union that declared peace between the Elites and the Prophets and marked the formal beginning of the Covenant. Now, this is becoming a little bit of a trend in this video, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I would absolutely love to see the Covenant Masters in a game one day. And you know what I'd like to see even more than that? The Covenant Masters in a game controlling the Sharkoi. And finally, we have one that kind of, sort of, maybe counts. I figured I'd cover it anyway, because in the era of loads of cutsy Covenant species suddenly getting canonized, you never know, this one might do too. This is the Alien Trooper. Only ever seen in concept art form, the Alien Trooper was another member of the Covenant that Bungie wanted to add to Halo 1, but unfortunately never got to. The idea was for it to be this bipedal creature that doesn't behave in a bipedal manner, so it had parts of its body that were missing, or extra limbs and that kind of stuff. There was even a design for it where it had a cannon coming through the hole in its chest, which Shikai Wang said was an idea that eventually kind of transferred over to the Hunters. According to Marcus Leto, the alien trooper made it to the texturing stage of development before being cut, so you know what? Maybe somewhere out there there's actually a model for this thing. You know, it kind of reminds me of the 4 trooper from Marathon, which should be no surprise by now. I mean, it was cut from early Halo 1 development, when everything in that era was like heavily inspired by Marathon, so it's no surprise. But you know what? I'd love to see this thing in a game one day, because as you all know, I'm always down for Halo and Marathon to like, link up, so to speak. And so, that's the mystery of the Covenant Fringe. How'd you find the first remake video? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments, and also any requests or suggestions for further remake videos, or further videos in general. And, you know, whilst you're down there, make sure you tell me your favourite weirdo from the Fringe. Was it the big hulky Marathon boys? the Slugmen that I don't even need to come up with a funny name for because they're literally called the Slugmen, or was it the Covenant Fish with Staffs? Let me hear it. And so, with that said, let's round this one out here. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the continued support over there, as per usual, and thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.